impulse, and momentum. So our goals for this session are the following. First, we'll start talking about momentum, how we use momentum to analyze physical situations. Secondly, we'll look at what we call impulse. That's the product of net force and time, and it's also equal to the change in momentum. Let's go back and think about Newton's second law. We wrote this down. Sum of all the forces, the net force, is ma. We rewrite it more like Newton wrote it in the first place. So a we can write as delta v over t. We're going to do, instead of m delta v, we're going to write that as delta mv. Okay, so we can get away with that only if the mass is constant, but it turns out that last expression, f net, is delta mv over delta t is generally true, and that's the way Newton described the Newton's second law when he wrote it. So we've really been using a special case of constant m. Okay, so here's Newton's version of Newton's second law. Sum of all the forces, the net force, is delta the change in some quantity mv with respect to time. So this thing mv is an important factor here. So, and note that this version of the equation is more general than our original version, the MA version, because it does account for changes in mass, such as when you have a rocket spewing gases out the back. Okay, so now we'll talk about something we call impulse. So there's our equation we just looked at, Newton's version of Newton's second law. And for one thing, we should come up with a name for this quantity mv. We'll do that in a minute. But we'll rearrange it first and say that f net times delta t is the change in this quantity m times v. We call that the impulse. Okay? And we should think of a name for this quantity. We can call it Fred or Jim or Julie, but let's call it momentum because that's what most everybody else calls it. Okay, now what is momentum? It's a vector. It points in the direction of the velocity. Because momentum starts with P, our symbol for momentum is P. You can see why we don't use M, because P equals MV. The M there is mass. Okay, so P stands for momentum. An object's momentum will change when it experiences a net force and the change of momentum is equal to what we call the impulse. Delta P is that net force multiplied by the time period during which that net force is applied. What about conservation of momentum? First of all, let's go over what we mean when we say that something is conserved. That means it has the same value at all times. So momentum conservation. Note that momentum changes when a net force acts on a system. The longer the net force acts, the larger the change in momentum. The bigger the force, the larger the change in momentum. But what happens if no net force acts on a system? All right, then there is no change in momentum. In other words, the momentum of the system is conserved. Let's kind of think of how that works for two carts on a track. Here's cart one and cart two. They're coming together and they're about to collide. Cart 1 might have a particular mass, 500 grams, half a kilogram, and a velocity of 20 centimeters per second to the right. Cart 2 is kind of a mirror image of that, similar mass, same mass in fact, and a velocity of the same size just in the opposite direction. What's the net momentum of this two-cart system? Okay, so you could work out m times v, convert your units appropriately, etc. But the key is Momentum is a vector. So these two momenta are equal and opposite, and therefore they cancel out. Okay. Now, no net external force acts on the two cart system. Cart one has gravitational force and a normal force applied by the track. Those are equal and opposite. Cart two, similar case. Okay, so if no net external force acts on this two-cart system, the momentum of the system must be conserved. Is the momentum of cart one conserved in the collision? No, it is not. Because cart two will apply a force to cart one. 
Similarly, the momentum of car 2 will change as well. But remember, the momentum of the system has to be conserved. Okay, so how does this work? This graph shows the graph of the net force acting on cart 1 because of cart 2 as a function of time. Okay. So the change in momentum is the area under the net force versus time graph. In this case, this will be a negative quantity. We're taking to the right to be positive here. How does the area under the net force versus time graph for cart 2 compare to that of cart 1? Well, do we need to know like how the masses compare or something like that? No. Nope. We just think about Newton's third law. The force applied by 1 on 2 is equal and opposite to the force applied by 2 on 1. Okay, so those two areas have the same magnitude but opposite sign. Okay. So, in other words, cart 1 experiences a change in momentum, but that's equal and opposite to cart 2's change in momentum. So, when you put the two carts together in one system, the net change in momentum is zero. Okay, you can apply to all sorts of collisions. You can apply that to all sorts of collisions. Okay, so what we learned here is that momentum conservation is a consequence of Newton's third law. Okay, you can apply that to cars colliding on the streets, hockey players running into each other, football players, etc., etc. Okay, but it sounds new, this stuff, right? Impulse and momentum, but really it's totally consistent with what we've looked at before. Newton's third law and Newton's second law. The end.